Hey everybody, I'm Kim Sandberg and this is Christina Whitney and we are so excited to do this virtual class for you today. This is how do I quilt it and Christina is this like the number one question we get all the time all the time. Yep. So we're both uh, educators at Handy Quilter. Long arm quilting is our thing. Yep. And we get asked this all the time, how do I quilt a quilt? So we have compiled ideas. We're gonna walk you through that today. Yep. And it's not that we just get questions of how do we quilt it, mm -hmm. but when we have quilts come in, because yes. we both quilt for hire as well, mm -hmm. and oftentimes, we'll be like, uh, uh, how do I quilt this? Exactly. So we're gonna go through some tips and tricks on how to come up with some ideas yeah. and help you out. Okay, so we have a list of some great ideas here and mm -hmm. some, some questions to ask yourself when you're starting this process. So the number one question you always wanna ask is, what is the quilt going to be used for? So I'm gonna quilt a quilt that is for a baby, very different than I'm going to hate, uh, do like, for example, a wall hanging. Yeah. A baby quilt, I want to be soft and cuddly. A wall hanging, I'm probably gonna quilt it to death so that it yeah. can stand up by itself. So it's a little bit more of an artwork. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the next question to ask is, what is the focus of the quilt? So what, there, there's some, more questions that go along with that. So Christina, yeah. when you're talking about the focus of the quilt, what are the other things that you ask yourself with that? Well, with that, I think, okay, do I want the piecing mm -hmm. to be the focus? Yeah. Or do I want the quilting to be the focus? Right. Or, you know, are there certain areas that I want to kind of combine the two? Right. So a, if you have a quilt with lots of negative space, mm -hmm. you know you're going to be wanting to really work on that quilting and maybe put a little bit more effort into it. Yeah. Whereas if you're quilting something that is really busy fabrics, yeah. um, lots of crazy colors, your quilting's not really gonna show. Yep. So you don't really want to put quite as much effort into those areas. Exactly. So think of your focus. And mm -hmm. um, the next thing we wanna talk about, uh, and this is maybe a little bit more when you're having somebody else quilt for you, but also just budgeting your time, um, edge to edge versus custom. And we actually have some great examples of that right here behind us. Yes. So. I want to point out though, a lot of people say, oh, it's just an edge to edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Edge to edge is finished. Exactly. It is great. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with doing an edge to edge. Yeah. I do lots of edge to edges. Me too. Um, Even on my personal quilts. I do a lot of edge to edge on yeah. my personal quilts. Yep. Well, you mentioned these quilts behind us. So oh, let, let's yeah. take a look. Let's talk at the, about um, these. These are the same pattern, mm -hmm. just quilted in three different ways so that you can see different styles and techniques. Um, this first one here is a lot of pro stitcher, yeah. um, the computerized system. This one is more free motion, ruler work. And then the last one is an all over edge to edge, edge, to edge. done with the pro stitcher. Yeah. So all of the quilts look fantastic. They do. I didn't do all of them, so you know. <laughs> can't take all the credit but we we quilted um, all three of these quilts um, Christina quilted this one I quilted that one and then this one also and but it's this this is just such a great contrast to show the exact same quilt with the same fabric quilted in three different ways and one's not better than another yep. they're all finished that's the key that's they are the key. all finished so working with that um, so when I'm deciding whether I'm going to edge to edge a quilt, especially a personal quilt, it's a decision of how much time <laughs> do I want to spend on this quilt. Because yeah. doing custom can take a lot of time. <laughs> and sometimes that's what I want. Um, I know that for me personally, smaller projects like this, I will take the time to custom. Um, I just finished a king size quilt and I absolutely did an edge to edge on that one because if I would have custom quilted it, it probably would have taken me 40 or 50 hours to custom quilt and I just, I, I don't have that much time to put into it. Yeah, along the lines with time, mm -hmm. if, you're cust or if you're quilting for a customer, mm -hmm. it's also their budget. Yes. Will their budget allow you to take the time to, frame or to um, custom quilt? Yeah. Because time is money mm -hmm. and your time is valuable, yeah. so you don't want to spend a ton of time doing stressful work, because sometimes custom work can be stressful, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then get paid less than minimum wage. Yeah. So things to think about, budget and time exactly. to determine what kind of quilting you're planning to do. Exactly. Uh, the next question we like to ask ourselves is, what is my current skill level? 
So I know that like when I first started quilting, a fabulous stipple over the entire quilt was the ticket. And I did a lot of quilts like that. And they look really good. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they're done. They were finished. Now, as time went on and I developed new skills, I added new uh, design elements to my quilting. Yeah. Like you, Im you increased your library. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For me personally, I do not like to do a quilt mm -hmm. unless I'm trying something new. Uh -huh. Or not new over the whole thing, but trying some new technique or okay. new skill and just adding to that so that I am I progressing it. and I'm not just standing still mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over and over again because that can get really boring. Yeah, I agree. So figure out what your current skill level is, yeah. do that, and then maybe add a little bit more. Yeah. Challenge e yourself. Each time, try try to add a little bit more challenge. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Um, it's a great way to continue to increase your skill, but I think it's also good to remember when you're deciding how to quilt a quilt. If you have never quilted feathers before and you're going to do feathers on this quilt, maybe trying those feathers on a quilt that actually has a busy fabric to start with is, is a great way to do that because the fabric is gonna be more the star of that quilt mm -hmm. rather than um, the, the, those feathers. It gives you a little bit of a comfort zone to be able to practice in, right? Yeah, you, you'll see the definition, mm -hmm. of the texture, but yeah. not necessarily really see, oh, let's look at that feather really yes. close. And exactly. So yeah, definitely a good place to practice is busy fabrics. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so another another question to ask yourself about the quilt is what is the style of the quilt? Is it a more traditional quilt? Was it made with like Civil War reproduction fabrics? Or is it something very modern that is maybe all solids with a lot of just white or gray in the background with negative space? You're going to quilt those differently mm -hmm. um, depending on the style of the quilt. I. I tend to definitely like the more modern. I tend to piece more modern. Um, Christina's definitely a little bit of a more traditional quilter. Yes, but we don't have to be stuck in those no, roles. No, absolutely not. I can have a very traditional quilt, mm -hmm. and I can be really wild and crazy oh, and yeah. quilt it modern. Exactly. You can have a modern quilt and put a traditional design yeah. on, like a Baptist fan or oh, yeah. shells or something. Absolutely, so absolutely. Don't feel like you're limited. You can only do this design on this type of quilt. They they can cross over, but if that's not your comfort level, then yeah. stick with what what's comfortable for you. What can complement mm -hmm. the quilt, and also what will bring out the focus of what you're trying to make the focus of the quilt. Yeah. So um, the last tip is here and the last question is you know is and we, we've kind of talked about this already but is the fabric super busy or is it a solid um, you know just like these quilts that are behind us the reason why the quilting really shows up in these is because they're solid fabrics mm -hmm. so there's nothing there's nothing else to take your eye away from that quilting so if you really want to show off your quilting solid fabrics or fabrics that even just have like a slight texture in them are the way to do that. If you want to practice something new, um, something that's printed is a great way to go, right? Yeah. So I recently did a quilt and I was so excited to do all this intricate like feather work and stuff. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I'm just gonna use white fabric. But I made the mistake, I did a tone on tone. Right. And even just that tone yeah. on tone makes everything kind of just blend in. Yeah, it's, it it's a white really on white. It didn't really pop as much as I wanted. And it does, it. Yeah. and you spent so much time quilting that quilt. <laughs> you know exactly I know, I know which exactly. one I'm talking about. It's a about. double wedding ring that she yep. made for her daughter's wedding. Mm -hmm. And she did this absolutely beautiful, the white inside the rings, and it's a tone on tone. And you have to get it at exactly the right angle to really be able to see that quilting. So it's something to consider. Yeah, so we're talking about how to quilt a quilt. Yeah. but. Those are some tips for how to piece a quilt, mm -hmm. how to pick out your fabric, depending on how you want to do the quilting. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, Thank if, you. I'm, I'm, if I'm doing a quilt where I really want to emphasize and show off my quilting, mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to go with some more solid fabrics. Absolutely. I totally agree on that one. So let's talk about some of the other things to consider when you're quilting a quilt. Number one is the type of batting that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. Now, batting you don't see, but it really affects the quilting. So, 
I think the number one batting to use if you really want your quilting to pop is wool. And I know that on these ones here, this one and this one over here, you and I, I believe we double batted both of Correct. these. And they both have a layer of wool on the top. And wool has more loft. Mm -hmm. So it just puffs up a little bit more. Yeah. Makes your quilting show. It's, it's the puffiness level. It is, it yeah. is the puffiness level. The other thing that's really awesome about wool is it's, um, when you fold it and then it's been folded for a long time and you open it up, it doesn't hold creases as well as cotton does. So if you're gonna have quilts, for example, as wall hangings, I know one of the reasons why I choose to use wool, I change my wall hangings uh, seasonally and that way I can roll them up or fold them up and store them and when I get them out, I can just give them a good shake and it actually gets most of the wrinkles out of them. That is a great tip yep. for sw swapping them out. Um, I, when I first started using wool batting, mm -hmm. I know I've shared this story before, but I had an instructor say, if you have teenage boys, mm -hmm. use wool batting. Yes. Because it's breathable. Yeah. It lets it that is. stinkiness out. <laughs> it it doesn't trap it in the bed. Yeah. So wool for stinky boys. <laughs> stinky boys. And I've actually started using wool in a lot of my quilts that I put on my bed. It's actually lighter in weight. Like it, it's not, it's not as heavy as cotton, mm -hmm. but it's warm and breathable. So it is really comfortable um, to sleep under. Now, the one, I, and I don't even wanna say necessarily a downside, but wool is a little bit more expensive. So it's, it's one of those um, battings that I reserve for those really special projects, for the wall hangings, for the quilt that I actually spent a lot of hours piecing and I'm not gonna put on my bed. I'm yeah. gonna use it for that. Um, other wool, uh, other batting, 80-20. Okay. <laughs> um, That's probably one of the most common battings. Yeah. It's the 80-20, it's a cotton polyester blend. You can also get a blend, um, I think it's cotton and wool. Yeah. Is it mm -hmm. cotton or polyester? No, I it's, cotton, it's cotton, cotton and wool. wool. Cotton, cotton and wool, um, yeah. and it's a really great one. It actually has just a little bit more loft to it, but it has more of the weight of mm -hmm. cotton. Yeah, and it so. helps it drape a little bit mm -hmm. better. But yeah, 8020 is um, a little bit lower cost than mm -hmm. the wool. Yep. Um, but it quilts out beautifully. Mm -hmm. And there are different types, different colors. Yeah, yeah you can get them in um, like bleached white if you're doing yeah. a white quilt yep. or black. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's kind of my go-to. Go-to. Mm -hmm. I would say for me, especially for quilts that um, I would consider utility quilts, meaning they're quilts that are actually going to be used on beds. Um, quilts that I like to call couch quilts that just like live on the back of the couch that you pull off and you snuggle up in. Um, I love it because it's washable, it doesn't shrink a lot, it holds its shape, and it's also a batting that you don't have to quilt really tightly. Um, a lot of the 8020s are like four to six inches apart, so you can do a bigger, looser design on them and you don't have to worry about that batting separating at all in there. I'm glad that you mentioned that because each manufacturer mm -hmm. is a little bit different with yep. how they produce their batting mm -hmm. and what they recommend as far as like spacing and cleaning and stuff. Yep. So definitely read the um, instructions yep. on the packaging for that particular batting. Exactly. So. Yeah, you want to make sure and do that. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of other types of batting out there. There's also 100% cotton. Um, one thing with 100% cotton is it's going to shrink a little bit more than any of these other battings that we've talked about. But if you like your quilts to have that nice, crinkly kind of antique, mm -hmm. it's, it's really great for that. Yeah. Um, another really great batting that I know I use, especially a lot in baby quilts, is bamboo. Because it is super soft, it's drapey, and the more you wash it and dry it, the softer it gets, which is really cool. Yep. Um, we haven't talked about polyester batting. Yeah. Let's talk about so polyester. polyester batting is another option. Yep, absolutely. Um, some people absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. I know for me, um, growing up with my grandmother's yeah. quilts, they were always like this thick. Yeah, the, the and, dotting this. <laughs> yeah, I, I quilted my first quilt and I put in an 80-20 and I took it back to my grandma <laughs> and it was one of her tops. And she, um, the next time I went to visit, she goes, um, you can take that quilt back. Um, <laughs> you need to put more batting in it. Because it was only like, instead of. <laughs> yes, and then I made some for my siblings with 80-20 instead of the polyester. And they're like, you can fit one quilt and or more stuff in the washer machine <laughs> and you can yeah. fold it. 
So, yeah, there, there's pros and cons. Yeah. I, I do have to say, though, some of those really thick polyester mm -hmm. battings are some of the snuggliest yeah. that my yeah. family loves. So think about the purpose. Yep. Um, allergies is also another mm. thing to think about. For sure. Some people are allergic to the wool. Yeah. So even the wool blend wouldn't be a good option. Yeah. Um, so things to think about. Yeah, definitely. And the, the um, I know that the polyester is, uh, it's probably the most cost efficient. <laughs> um, and it is, it is a great one because it launders and wears well. But I know um, I've done some quilts too with a lot of detail with that really high loft polyester batting. And it actually acts like wool, like mm -hmm. it gives you a lot of pop. But um, those, I did a bunch of those quilts for samples that I traveled with and they hold wrinkles for forever. That was the thing I found. So that's kind of why I made the switch to wool. Yeah. But polyester definitely has its place. Yeah, it's and it comes place. in so many different yep. lofts and it different does. brands. And it absolutely does. Yep. Okay. Hey. So the next thing to consider is thread. And Christina's actually got a whole bunch of thread over here. Now thread, oh, it's like fabric. This is when playtime comes out, right? I absolutely love thread. And we've got a lot of different types here that we can talk about when to use the different types of thread. Okay. I'm going to move this over so we can look at this look against at this the top. So we've got just some a white um, white background here. This would be like negative space in a quilt. And let's look at some different types of thread here. So let's just start over here. So this okay. first one you have is a trilobal polyester. This is like a um, embroidery thread. And you can see that it's got that fantastic shine. So this is great to use when you want your thread to be a little bit of a of the star. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It stands out a little bit more. Yeah. Gives it a little pizzazz. Yeah. So I, I love that. And when I'm testing threads, mm -hmm. I like to make a puddle yeah. on my fabric, especially if I'm trying to find a thread that blends well. Right. Right. I, I like to puddle it out so I can see what it's going to look like. I love that. If I were doing turquoise on white, I wouldn't necessarily need to really puddle it, but right. but it's good. It's good to see that. Yeah. So that looks really good. So that's Magnifico. Okay. Our next one that we have here, this is micro quilter. Now this is a very fine thread. It's a hundred weight thread. The Magnifico was a, is is a forty weight thread. So that's a, a thicker thread. Mm -hmm. um, micro quilter. So when do you use micro quilter, Christina? I use it for micro quilting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but. Um, I use it a lot when I'm wanting something to just melt down into the fabric right. and not be seen. Okay. I want that texture, but not mm -hmm. the look of the thread. I want that, maybe the piecing to yeah. be more of the focus. Yep. Um, so I'll use something that's a lot uh, um, finer Fine. so that it doesn't show quite as much. I love that. So contrasting these two threads, the Magnifico is the star of the show and the micro quilter, it just melts into the background. Yeah, and I have some micro quilter in white too. Oh, so I don't know if you I don't can even, even know if you'll be able see to see it that. on there. So that's what I'm going for. Well, and I love the micro quilter. It just gives a hint of color. So like one of my favorite colors of micro quilter to quilt with on pretty much any quilt is a really light pink. And you don't even oh. see it until you get super like you have to get like right up next to it. But it going from just like a white to an off-white even to a darker color it just blends so it's that great blending thread okay what you got for us next this is wonder wonderful Phil. it's a trilobal mm -hmm. it's 40 weight so this is pretty much the same as that first turquoise magnifico one. yeah but you can kind of see maybe the difference between the micro quilter mm -hmm. that's the really fine and it's more of a matte finish well, and if we put that maybe on top of the the white there I don't even know. Or the peach? This, yeah, this just completely blends in, mm -hmm. whereas this one stands out just a little bit. Yep. Especially so with that sheen. Thicker and with the sheen. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see the difference between those two. Yep. Um, let's go to So Fine. Yeah, let's look at So Fine. Okay, get that out of so, the way. So So Fine then. is, it's a polyester thread also, and but it doesn't have the sheen on it. You can see that it's matte. It's a super low lint, which I absolutely love. It means I don't have to spend as much time cleaning out the bobbin area mm -hmm. of my machine. Um, it's a 50 weight though, so there's, it's not as thick of a thread as, for example, the Magnifico. So it can be used as a blending thread, um, but you are going to see it more than you would like the micro quilter. Yes. Um, with it being a little bit heavier, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more durable. Exactly. So it's going to not give you 
as many problems mm -hmm. po potentially. Yeah. So this is a, a great weight of thread to use for any kind of quilting. Any, any kind of quilting. I even use that for piecing. I use so fine for, pie for piecing, which I love. All right, so the next one we have, this is Omni, which is a 40 weight polyester, and it's a matte polyester, and it's one that actually can look, quite often people think that it is a cotton thread. Um, this is a really great workhorse thread. I know for me personally, especially when I'm quilting for customers, a lot of my customers, when we do an edge to edge, we use some kind of an Omni. Very durable. Mm -hmm. um, it's not super linty. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Just a good, did you just call it a workhorse? Yeah, okay. it's, a wor it's a workhorse thread. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was going to say, but then I thought, oh, maybe you already said it. I did say it, but that's okay. You but that's what it, it is. It is a great workhorse thread. A great workhorse thread. I'll it is a, is a really a great one. Bit. Now, the last kind of thread here we have is a variegated, and this is a cotton. This is actually King Tut, and variegated threads can be so much fun, but they can also be a little bit challenging. Um, if there is a huge variation in colors in that variegation, um, sometimes thread is showing up in places you don't want it to because of the contrast. Yep. But I love a good variegated thread when I'm doing an, like an edge to edge with busy fabric because it really does just blend in. Yeah, with my luck, I would be stitching this and the blue would show in the yellow and uh -huh. the yellow would show in the blue. Uh -huh. yeah. And so yeah, you do need to be careful with um, the variegated. Yeah. But they are fun to play with. They are fun to play with. Yeah. Here's another little tip. So I was I was actually taught this. When you're trying, when you're looking at a variegated cone of thread, don't hold it like this to look at it. Look at it from straight on the top. And then that actually gives you more of an idea of how that variegation is gonna quilt on your machine. Because when you hold it like this, um, depending on where the pattern is in the thread, you may see one color more than another. But when you look from the top, you don't. So that is a great tip. Kind of a kind of a fun tip. Um, so there's one other type of thread that we don't have here. That's one of my favorites. Which one is uh, it? Mono poly. Oh. So that's actually a clear um, polyester thread. Mono a uh, mono poly, and I actually used it on the quilt right there. Yeah. And it's my I'm a lazy quilter. I don't like to change my thread. <laughs> and it's a great, it's a great uh, thread that you can just use on an entire quilt. It's, yeah. I, I, I use it on a lot, of, a lot of quilts. And it comes in either a clear or a smoke. Um, it's a really great blending thread. And with these threads that we've shown you, most of them are from a company called Superior Threads. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. all of them are. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean that that's the only kind of thread no. that you can use on no. your long arm machine. There's a huge variety yeah. of different brands that are available out there. And um, you should be able to use all of them as long as they are a high quality yep. thread. That's absolutely what we recommend. Um, high quality threads give you less problems, less thread breaks. Whether less you're, headaches. Yeah, whether you're quilting on your domestic machine or on a long arm, uh, just high quality threads are, are the way to go. Okay. Let's get to the fun part now. So this is auditioning oh. quilt designs. So this is where it, it can get really fun. We, we, we just, we've, we've got some fun things here. So let's show you some of our tools that we use um, for auditioning quilt designs. So Christina's got a quilt top here and she's gonna lay this out. And th this is something that we do a lot in the studio. We, we get together, we finish a quilt top, we have like, almost like a ritual. When we finish a quilt top, we bring it in and we spread it out on the table. And we get, the first thing we do is we get out a shower curtain and we put it over the top of it. And people might ask, why are you getting a shower, shower curtain, curtain out? Because if you look closely at the shower curtain, you can see where I have drawn on the shower yeah. curtain with Sharpie. So it is a second layer of protection for my yes. quilt top because I get going, I'm in the mode. Christina has a little oh. too much fun. Yep, and I, I okay, forget, that, this way. forget that um, it is a quilt top. Okay, so we've, Oops, so sorry. Christina's got the, the quilt down and we've got the shower curtain over the top of it. And then we're going to use, it's called Quilter's Preview Paper. So this is really great. It comes on a roll and it's actually got a black edge at the top and the bottom of it. But the cut edge here doesn't have a line on it. So Christina... <laughs> Tell us how you fix that. <laughs> well, I'm actually going to flip it over so that okay. 
the roll doesn't go off the edge of the table. There we go. Good idea. Okay, so to fix this problem of not having the black line, mm -hmm. I am going to take some painter's tape. The brighter the color, the better. <laughs> yes. And make sure it doesn't blend with your quilt top. And I'm just going to tape it down. I love it. Like I mentioned earlier, I get in the mode, so sometimes I don't even see the black lines. Mm -hmm. So, Hence the shower curtain. Shower curtain. <laughs> it's, it's an extra layer of protection underneath that. Yep. So this now allows us to actually audition designs on here to scale, which is, which is really fun. Um, I also love using this technique because it helps me think out ahead of time what my stitch path is going to be. Ooh, stitch path. Stitch path, I know. So Christina, tell us about this quilt. Let's, let's answer some of the questions that we talked about earlier. So this is a quilt okay. that you made. What is the purpose of this quilt? This quilt is going to be a wall hanging. Okay. It's a little bit too small to be functional. Okay. Um, I, it's the first quilt I ever did English paper piecing in. Mm. So I kind of want that paper piecing um, to, to be, the, be the, the focus. Okay, so that answers the question of what's the focus. Um, I don't have a time limit or budget on this one. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with custom quilting. Okay. I'll probably use two layers of batting okay. because I want the quilting to show even more. So I'll use a wool mm -hmm. on the top and then underneath that an 80-20. Okay. And hmm, thread. Thread, yeah. What color of threads would you use with this? Well, since I want the quilting to just be kind of the back mm -hmm. background. Okay, because um, the because the piecing is the focus. Yes, I'll use a white in the white. Okay. Probably a, some kind of a yellow in mm -hmm. the yellow. Mm -hmm. And then I don't it's know that I'm here. really going to do any quilting in the actual English paper piecing except for. I don't even want to do any ditch stitching. Yeah, because could you stitch it by will, hand? Yeah, that maybe mess up. maybe do just a little bit of an echo inside of it. So so yeah. this is can we start drawing? Go for it. So this is Here, the fun. I'll even scoot over so you can have some This is the room. fun part Ow. of the preview paper, and and this is this is what we like to call quilting by committee, right? Yes. So first thing I'm going to do is some ditch quilting. I want to stabilize everything, make sure it's staying square, mm -hmm. and. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch to whoop, lay those down. I like it. Here's a little tip with stitch in the ditch. Mm -hmm. Use the a lighter thread color. Mm -hmm. Like if I've got white and yellow, mm -hmm. use white thread. Mm, okay. That way if it goes over into the darker side, yeah. you can sharpie it. Oh, <laughs> and Christina's favorite tool for quilting. Fixing quilting boo-boos. Yes. Sharpies. Although, actually, we just got the um, the Pigma in all the different colors, which we, because we found out that somebody, I don't remember who it was, they mentioned that Sharpie over time can kind of fade yeah. a little funny. And, so. and I say Sharpie, but I really yeah. mean fabric pen. Fabric pen of some sort. Sharpie okay. just sounds more fun. It does sound more fun. Okay, so we're just drawing designs on here to audition them. And the really cool thing is with this preview paper, if we don't like something, we can just erase it. So we're using dry erase markers mm -hmm. right now. We could use Sharpie mm -hmm. if we wanted it to stay on longer. Okay, so I think you should do some just lines in the background here. What you know do you what? think? I think that I have a bad pen. It's Yours not is showing. It's not really showing up. It's is not it? showing. Let's go. Your purple looks really good, so I'm going to use purple. The purple too. is really popping, isn't it? It is. So okay. this this is really fun, and this is where uh, you know one of the things that we like to suggest. Um, if you're always having questions about how should I quilt something, is to create your own quilting committee. So get some friends that you trust that have um, either, d and depending on what you like to do, if you want to challenge yourself, find somebody that has a different quilting style than you, and they will they might help you push your boundaries a little bit to try something new. Not your buttons. Not your buttons. <laughs> um, we'll do, okay, I'm going to come down here again and do some of this. But it's fun to get ideas from different people to incorporate into your quilting. I, I wanted the piecing to be the focus, yeah. but we, we kind of mentioned this is hand stitch. That means that all of the ditches are my, 
threads. Yeah. So if I were to stitch in the ditch around all of these, I would potentially be just breaking the threads that's holding oh, it together. Yeah. You don't want to so, go there. So that's why I chose to just stitch right on there. And I would maybe use that monopoly so it hmm. blends in where whatever. It's a good idea. Fabric it's on. Yeah. Especially okay. this fabric um, where you've got really light, meaning from white to a deep navy, trying to find one thread that's going to blend with all of that is mm -hmm. basically impossible, unless yeah. if you use something like a monopoly. Yeah. So I like the idea here. I don't know. I don't know what you think, but actually stitching just like maybe a quarter of an inch inside the piecing. That way it tacks everything down. Oh, did it shift a little? Um, doing a fun little flower there in the center and then just doing some diagonal lines to create a backdrop. If you really wanted to get fancy, you could turn that into a crosshatch. If I draw that mm -hmm. much of it, that might be a little, <laughs> a little yeah. more than I want to do. I think I would possibly also do like a quarter of an inch echo Ooh. around each of the shapes. I like that. Because that will really help that shape to pop mm -hmm. out more and then do some kind of a background fill in here, whether it be like a crosshatch or mm -hmm. Um, just swirls or swigglies swirls, or yeah. any kind of background, um, but that will help make that pop show even more because it, yeah. it leaves that space that's not quilted, mm -hmm. which draws the eye. Exactly. And remember the the part that you see in quilting that you really, as Christina just mentioned, that your eye is really drawn to is the part that is not quilted. That's the mm -hmm. part that puffs up and has that dimension. It creates a shadow. So exactly by stitching around the outside of that piecing it makes it the focal point. Yeah we can that. show an example in this ah. quilt back here okay. um, if we look at these oh yeah squares, squares. right here mm -hmm. I left a quarter of an inch echo on the in or I stitch a quarter of an inch inside, inside and then filled it so you get this nice box around mm -hmm. there or we also have the these, outline. Yeah, these are more than a quarter inch. These are pretty chunky. Yeah. But that's what y your eye is, is drawn, drawn to. to. Yep. No, I love that. That's such a great example. Okay, so going back to this quilt here, what kind of a design do you think you'll do in your... Because, um, mm. you know, this is a fun fabric because it's a, got a good contrast here. But because it's a batik with just a really, there's not a ton of um, contrast in the, from the yellow, it's not like a super dark to a super light, uh -huh. your quilting's actually gonna show there. So what kind of a design do you think you'll do in your sashing here? That's a good question. With the size of the sashing, it's only about an inch. Yeah. So I could potentially leave that unquilted. That's true. And let that pop as and well. Let that really pop. Especially mm -hmm. because this this is a quilt, like I think right here is like a perfect place to show this. We don't have regular intersections. Yes. This is not symmetrical. So trying to find a design that's going to go through and then link or something potentially. Yeah, and, and getting things to line up. It's It could cause a lot of problems. So I like that. So you would just stitch in the ditch inside on the white, mm -hmm. but leave the yellow unquilted. Yeah. I think that would be really good. This it's is a fun, fun quilt. I'm gonna be excited to see what you will do with this. Me too. Um, <laughs> let's let's scoop this quilt over just a hair here. And I wanna, I wanna look at this outside border because it's a little thicker. Okay, so we can okay. see it there on that side. Yeah, we'll have to kind I'm of pull this. I'm gonna scoot the yeah. preview paper over scoot before I start paper. drawing. And yes, we know we're not lining up now, but that's okay. <laughs> so what about that outside border? So there's, these inside ones you're thinking you wanna leave okay. plain, mm -hmm. but what would you do in that outside border? So that one that's a little wider. Stitched, and look, I almost went off the preview paper. <laughs> so this is a little bit wider, so yeah. I would wanna stitch this down. Um, I. I like to take ideas from the quilt top okay. to do the border. Mm -hmm. So okay. looking at this, mm. I've got some hearts, I've got pinwheels, I've got some tumblers. Got lines. I've got lines. So you're looking at the fabric. I'm looking at the fabric. I'm looking at the, oh, shape the shapes of the, okay. the paper piece. Yeah. So to Petals. me, the easiest one is the circle. Yeah, amen. I could just do a string of pearls oh, all the way through cool. and draw in uh -huh. the shape of that um, 
paper piecing that I did. Okay, so that would be really cool to do and then um, do like what you did on this quilt back here. We keep referring to this one, but you did the circles here and then you actually did some micro quilting around them to really make these circles pop. I feel really creative right now. Let's do some circles <laughs> in the border. But you know what? Here's, yeah. here's another tip that you need to remember. <laughs> you don't have to use 75 different designs on a quilt to make it look good. It's actually, um, like, I remember when I first started going to a lot of quilt shows, I started noticing that the award-winning quilts often only had three, maybe six different quilting designs in them. And those same designs are just repeated at different sizes and scales mm -hmm. throughout the quilt. And it makes it cohesive. Yes. Sometimes if you get too much going on, it's just like, ah, yeah. I, can't, I can't do it. Um, so yeah, having that same consistent design throughout. Mm -hmm. um, some people say, okay, let's pick five shapes. Yeah. And we'll just repeat those in different sizes and yeah. different areas of the quilt. Um, so yeah, that's... I can do circles in every one of my yeah. borders. I'll do a different <laughs> fill around them or something. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with getting like a handful of designs that you love to quilt and using them in every single quilt. Um, one of our national educators, Debbie Brown, I love her, one of her favorite things that always pops up in her feed is, um, can you quilt a quilt without ribbon candy? And of course the answer is no. Yeah, so every time I do ribbon candy on my quilts, I feel like I'm channeling my inner Debbie Brown. I love it. And, and I, love I just it. sit there and just cruise Enjoy along. That. Every quilt can have ribbon candy. That's exactly right. So we have I fun love, with that. Love some good ribbon candy. All right, well, let's switch and do a different quilt here. Okay. So we'll pull this one out, Yay. put that one over there, and let's oh, this pull is another a quilt fun out. One. This is a fun one. Okay, this is under a little, the shower curtain, okay. not on top. Under the shower curtain. <laughs> Okay. And you don't have to use a shower curtain. No. It's just no. economical. We just tend to get a little exuberant <laughs> while we're drawing. <laughs> so we've learned we've learned it just helps it be a little more um, protected. Yes. Okay, so this quilt is a double wedding ring quilt that I have actually made for a really good friend of mine. Why don't we scoot that that way just a little bit? Which, um, which thing am I scooting? Uh, the quilt. Oh, okay. Let's just scoot the quilt way just a little bit okay and we're kind of we're kind of here in the center of the quilt this is essentially leftover pieces from another project that I put together I've got a my dear friend Deanne absolutely loves these colors and I pieced this like two years ago and I keep meaning to get it finished by her birthday maybe by next year Deanne I'll actually have it quilted now that I'm gonna get some ideas for it so this is a fun one that there's actually a fun little hidden, there's a couple of hidden um, treasures in this fabric. So that's another place that you can look for um, fabric things. So if you look really carefully right here, this is some fun tulip pink fabric. There's actually a little horse, there's a unicorn, and then there's a little water serpent. Do you unicorn, see? Unicorn, look, it's got its little yeah, horn right there. Yeah, it's got its little horn right there. So there's that. And then there's also um, some little birds right here in this one. So are then, you going to quilt unicorns? Probably not. <laughs> but, ooh, ooh, okay. idea. Idea. That's my monkey noise when I get excited. <laughs> oh, no. So we've got the little sea guy yeah. with his jagged oh, yeah, yeah. spines. Yeah. You could do ooh. little jagged, Okay. can't think of the word so, at the moment. So, <laughs> like a swirl, a little swirl with that, with the little jagged on top but of like, it. Okay. Like pointy, so, like, why don't you just start drawing on this one? I, there's a part of this, um, there's a part of me that wants to custom quilt this because this will definitely be, I mean, it's small, it's like three feet square. Um, I will definitely double bat it so that the quilting really shows up. But the quilting is only going to show up in some of the fabrics here. Like in the solids, it's definitely going to show up. But like over in here or in here, I'm really not going to see that quilting. So Christina, you got any ideas for me on stuff, fun stuff to do here? Well, just going along with the spines, mm -hmm. you could, let's see, let's make some increments here. Okay. So I can do... Oh, very cool. Just to pull in the back of the, what did we call it, sea monster? Oh, they got a little sea serpent or yeah. You know, whatever he is. Okay, I like that. So we could do that in all of the, the melons here. Um, 
in the center, I'm thinking I need to channel my Debbie Brown. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. I think I like ribbon candy in something like this. This could really be fun to kind of do a little. Ribbon candy is a great shape that can fit in any shape yes. or size. Yes. You can do them big, you can do them little, you can alternate if you have to go between the small area and the larger area. Exactly, I like that. So if we do ribbon candy in the middle of that, it can like look like an eye. I like that, that's so fun. So another, another design that um, I love to quilt is like a wishbone. So let's see if I can yeah. do that one in this. So this is, this is a quilt too. We, we wanted to show you guys a quilt that does not have square or straight piecing. And so that's kind of the idea behind this one. Everything's curved. So you have to kind of really think about how to fill that space. So we could do something like that. Yeah, now what do we do, do inside these? So you just did essentially a little. Just an echo. An echo inside. inside. And you could even just continue that echo, just oh, making it smaller and cool. smaller. Okay, I like that. Oh. There we go. Or you, oh, hmm. <laughs> I might have to try out that other design um, separately. <laughs> Christina's, <laughs> <laughs> Christina's got ideas. So um, I like, I really like this. I like this, I like this. My, your ribbon candy. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't compare. Can we just say that? Don't compare your quilting to other people's quilting. We tell people that all the time. We're all at different places in our quilting journey. Remember, you are where you are and be proud of what you do. Enjoy yep. what you do. Okay, I'm thinking. Yeah, these guys yeah. here. My, my initial go-to for anything like this, a four patch. Uh-huh. Oh, continuous curve. Continuous curve. Love it. You can even do the inside ones if you yeah. want. I like that. Okay, that's cool, yeah. Well, this has given me some good ideas for this one. This is definitely, a, um, you know, really I could do something different in every single one of these like areas, which you would be really fun. You could make this a sampler of your favorite designs Ooh. that you like to quilt for people. But you said you're giving it to a friend. I am, but that's okay. Okay. She, I think she would actually enjoy that. Well, she's a quilter too, right? She is a quilter. Yeah, so yeah. give her some stuff yeah. that she can work on. So one of my favorite fills, and people always laugh when I do this, but I, I absolutely love it. It's just a stipple with a loop. And it is great to just fill in areas. So I don't know. What's, what's one of your fun um, fill some things that you could throw in there? Mm. Um, I like to sometimes do like the spiral and around and then mm -hmm. add in a paisley. I like another it. Another spiral. And things like this you can just echo, keep echoing oh, yeah. to fill in that space until you get to where you want to go. See, now we have to fill in the whole space. Well, I went over into the That's other okay. section, so my apologies. That's okay. I like this. And the best part about this preview paper is I, we can keep this and then when I'm ready to quilt it, I can get this out and it actually fits pretty much in the throat space of my machine. So I can lay yeah. it on top and just remind myself of what I want to quilt. Yeah. And anytime I'm getting ready to quilt, mm -hmm. even if it's a design that I'm really confident with, mm -hmm. I will go through with my finger and I will just kind yeah. of trace out, just get that muscle memory going, get confident with what you're going to do. Okay. Take a deep back. breath yes. and then start quilting. Okay, so the last type of quilt that we get asked about all the time is a quilt that has a lot of negative space, what we call negative space. And that's just a plain, like a plain white background. It might be light gray. Actually, it can be any color, mm -hmm. but it's when there's just a lot of space to quilt in. And this can be a real stumper for um, quilters. So Christina does absolutely amazing things with um, negative space. And this is actually her quilt. It's a block exchange, right? Mm -hmm. So purpose of this quilt is just to finish it for the challenge. <laughs> are we at this point? Can I, is it okay for me to say that? Yes. But what, what are you thinking of quilting on this one? Well, my first thing with negative space is um, I want to break it down. Right. 
looking at all of that is very, very overwhelming. Absolutely. So I like to try to create a secondary design. Um, I'm not really going to show a design right now, but something that I could do just to break up the space is I'm going to draw a spine coming mm, through here. Very cool. And I'm going to echo that okay. again so that it draws to the eye. Mm -hmm. And now I've got smaller spaces mm. that I could work with. I like that. Um, so maybe I wanted to fill this area in with some kind of a feather shape. Cool. Or I could um, do just like a background fill. You, you okay, I was going to say I would do, I was thinking maybe like a swirl. And I think you kind of did this on a different one, but. Ooh, fantastic colors I just did. Yep, and you could even break it down even more. Let's say yeah. um, I'm going to, I want to have lots of triangles on this quilt. Mm. I'm going to actually stitch a triangle and echo that, and I'm going to have a ghost echo there. I love it. So I like to ghost different shapes that are mm -hmm. in the piecing. Yeah. Um, just, again, using those same elements, drawing yeah. out what's already in the quilt. Gotcha. Um, and then I could go in and do... Um, just some kind of a fill. Pebbles or... Just scribble. To pack it <laughs> down. That's actually a valid... <laughs> A valid quilting technique, yeah. which can be really cool when you really want something to pop. If you do that scribble quilting or like yeah. a really tiny stipple, um, it really makes it pop. The scribble is definitely easier than a tiny stipple, though, to keep to keep things nice and yes. consistent. Yes. So, well, we really hope that this gave you some great ideas. Um, we want to challenge you to go out and find your quilting committee. Mm -hmm. So. At work, we have kind of a quilting committee in the studio, which is so much fun. Um, other places you can find your quilting committee, a guild. Yes, there's lots of guilds mm -hmm. out there where you can go in person. Yeah. If um, you don't have a guild that you yeah. want to go to, online. There Absolutely. are Facebook groups mm -hmm. galore for whatever type of quilting you're wanting to yeah. do. And it's a very supportive environment. Mm -hmm. um, so online, there's options. Um, just friends and family. Yeah. And Any remember other trusted though, quilters that you know. <laughs> with your quilting committee though, yeah. take what they say with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. If they'd say, oh, you've got to do feathers over this whole thing and you oh. hate feathers, don't do it. Yeah. Do yeah. what you like because mm -hmm. in the end, this is your quilt or your customer's quilt. Yeah. Um, so you also want to make sure that if your committee's telling you to do something that's not in your comfort level, that yeah. you're not comfortable, you know, you're not at that skill level yet. Yeah then don't do it. Yeah. Work on that until you're ready. Um, but yeah, th you can get great ideas from other people. Absolutely. Th things you wouldn't think about. So I've, I've got some new ideas for my quilt. So Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm ready to go quilt. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, thanks for joining us today. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe. You can visit um, handyquilter.com for more details. Uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next month. And in the meantime, have fun quilting.